Today's episode is gonna change how you embroider textured fabrics forever. That's because today I will be using two types of topping that you can use to make your embroidery stand out. Water soluble topping and dry cover up topping. I'll tell you all about how each topping works and what benefits each one has. I'll also use both of these toppings to embroider a set of custom bathrobes and afterwards, we'll check on the results to see which one looks best. But before we get started, remember to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. The materials we'll be using for this project are two 5.5 inch Mighty Hoops, two bathrobes, our water soluble stabilizer, our dry cover topping, our 3.5 ounce stabilizer, a pair of scissors, our standard 7511 embroidery needles, and our embroidery thread. I'll also be using the MT1501, capable of embroidering up to 15 colors in a single run. This embroidery machine is perfect for tackling a variety of embroidery projects and multicolored designs. If you wanna learn more about the MT1501, click the link in the card above or the description below to speak with one of our product specialists today. Let's start by digitizing our design. All right, we're gonna upload our design. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our left side of our toolbar. We're gonna come over to our backdrop tool. We're gonna hit select, and then we're gonna go and select our design. So what we'll do here is on the right side of our tab, we're gonna select our width, and we're gonna put four inches. We made it four inches because this is the best design size for our robe. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lighten our text. We'll make it lighter, and then we'll hit apply so that I could see the text and also I could see my stitches. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go over back to my left side of my toolbar and I'm gonna select my satin tool. I'm gonna to start with the middle of the A, that way it gets covered on the edges by the sides of the A. All right, so now I'm gonna go over to the top of my toolbar and I'm gonna select realistic view. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a ladder from the right side on the bottom part of my A going from the curve all the way up. And I'll do this by holding my command key and building my ladder. And now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the left side of my A, building a ladder from the curve all the way up. And then once again, we'll hold our command key and build our ladder. By holding our command key, we'll have nodes come out instead of squares. That way it helps with our curves. And now we're gonna do the top part of our A from the right side going to the left. And now moving on to our letter R, we're gonna start on our left side at the corner of our letter and build the bridge from the bottom up. So now we're gonna do the curve of the R So with my shape tool, what I'll do is I will fix the bottom portion of my R just like that. We need to adjust this so we can fill in our area and have a smoother curve. And now I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go down to the order portion of our tab and then I'm gonna click backward. We are sending this piece to the back so that it looks exactly how you would write it in cursive with a pen. And now we're gonna move on to our eye. Our eye is an easier letter to digitize. So what we'll do is we're gonna start from the top and going down. And then near the bottom, we're gonna use our shape tool again, just like we did with our R. So now we're gonna move on to our A and we're gonna start with the circular portion of our A. We're gonna build our ladder around the curve of the A. And 
And then once again, we're gonna go to our shape tool so we can fix the bottom portion of our letter. All right, once we finish using our shape tool, let's go ahead and go back to our satin tool and continue building out our letter. Now over here, we're gonna start with our letter N. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start on the middle of the N, on the curvature. And same thing with our satin tool. We're gonna hit the command key and hold it and build out our ladder. All right, now we're gonna go back into our shape tool and we're gonna fix the bottom portion of the end. All right, let's go back to our satin tool and let's build the left side of our end. And once that's done, now I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and duplicate your letter. All right, so now I'm gonna group my letter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my command key. I'm gonna do, make a box over the end by holding left click and dragging over the end. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to group. All right, now that I've grouped my letter, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna select copy. And then I'm gonna select paste. Chroma will always paste the first letter on top. So I just go ahead and drag and drop to the other end. All right, so we have an A already digitized. We're gonna group it first. We're gonna right click and we're gonna do copy and then we're gonna paste the letter A over to the final A that we have. After you moved your A, you can adjust your lines as preferred. So now we're gonna finish off with the dot on the letter I. So now what we're gonna do is go to our satin tool and we're gonna hold the command key and we're just gonna build from left to right and we're just gonna build our dot. So now that we've completed our name, let's go ahead and left click and drag and build a box over the name. And then we're gonna go over to our command tab. And then our command tab, we're gonna select end command and we're gonna select trim. And once we do that and hit apply, all of our jump stitches will be cleared. All right, we're gonna go over to our fill tab and we're gonna change our density to 0.35 and then let's hit apply. Let's go ahead and go to the top of our toolbar and simulate how this will stitch out. Oh, okay, I'm seeing here a little bit of a sequence uh, disorder. Uh, let's go ahead and let's change our grouping over here in our sequence tab on the right. And let's move our A to the bottom. All right, let's do our redraw tool one more time. And now it's ready to embroider. First, I'm gonna go ahead and unhoop my Mighty Hoop. Then I'm gonna grab my two sheets of 3.5 on stabilizer and place them on the inside of my robe. And then I'm gonna grab my water soluble topping and place it on the outside of my robe. And then I'm gonna hoop. 
For your water soluble topping, you want to make sure that it's flat. Otherwise, if it's not flat, it'll bunch up when it starts stitching. Now let's go ahead and take it to our embroidery machine. We're going to go into our file and we're going to go into our file that says relax. We're going to hit OK and we're going to go over to our design set. Since we're using the Mighty Hoop, we're going to also use the parameters for the D Hoop. Let's hit OK. All right, perfect. And what we'll do is I'll just go to the colors. We're only using one color, so in this case it's going to be our seafoam green. So that's number four. Now let's go ahead and trace. This trace is just to make sure that my design will follow within the parameters of the hoop. Okay, our trace looks good. Let me go ahead and do my contour trace. My contour trace will show me exactly where my design is in a stitch. All right, fits like a glove. And then, the last thing I'll do, let's go ahead and we'll change up the speed to 600. Okay. All we have left to do now is hit start, and we're ready to go. Our water soluble example is done. Let's go ahead and take it out of our machine. Let's go ahead and unhoop it. Tear off our water soluble stabilizer. Pick out these parts. For those of you who've never worked with water soluble topping before, this will help flatten my surface on my robe so that my embroidery stands out more clearly. As the name suggests, it is also water soluble, which means you can clean up any excess by adding a little water around the edges. We actually have a past episode of Embroidery Hub where we showcase four of the most popular water stabilizers and how to use them. I'll leave a link to that video in the card above and the description below so you can check it out. All right, this came out pretty good. Now let's go ahead and test out our dry cover up topping. All right, so for this one, we're gonna do the exact same thing we did for our water soluble stabilizer. The only difference is what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our dry cover up stabilizer. We're gonna place our stabilizer on the inside of our rope. And then on the outside of the rope, we're gonna place our dry cover-up sheet. And then once we do that, let's go ahead and hoop it, and let's take it to our machine. Since this is the same design that we're using as we did on the first rope, we're gonna go ahead and retrace. This trace is just to make sure that my design will follow within the parameters of the hoop. Okay, our trace looks good. Let me go ahead and do my contour trace. My contour trace will show me exactly where my design is in a stitch. And then all we gotta do after that is press start. All right, so our dry cover topping is done. Let's go ahead and unhoop it from the machine. Clean up our dry cover topping. Unlike my water soluble topping, this material will not dissolve when wet. That means if you have to wash your garment or your garment gets wet for any reason, your topping will stay in place. So you'll never have to worry about your fabric poking through your stitches. And topping comes in a wide range of colors, 
so you can find the exact color that you need for your embroidery. That way your fabric doesn't poke through your embroidery when you're stitching. Both of these robes came out amazing. However, the one with the water soluble topping came out with more definition than the dry cover up one. Either way, these will be an easy sell. Now that we have our robes embroidered, let's see how different toppings affect our profit potential. We bought our robes online as part of a three pack for $21, so $7 a piece. For robe one, we used roughly 50 cents worth of water soluble stabilizer and about $2 worth of stabilizer and embroidery thread. So our all in cost is $9.50. For our dry cover up topping, it's a little bit more expensive at 69 cents, but our embroidery thread and stabilizer stayed the same at $2. So for this one, we're in at $9.69. However, once complete, we could sell these robes each for $63 or $126 total, which is a profit margin of over 85%. Welcome to paradise. All right, that's all the time we have for today. If you're looking for more inspiration for your next embroidery project or to get some more embroidery advice, then be sure to check us out on Facebook and join our embroidery and custom apparel mastery group. If you haven't done so already, be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok for informative and entertaining content. Also, be sure to let us know in the comments section below if there's any other ideas you'd like to see in a future episode of Embroidery Hub. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.